Okay, great. So, so my name is, uh, as, as the intro, I'm Gabriel Abed, and, and to my right is uh, Jamari Thorne, and then Roland Higgins. Uh, so thank you guys for having us, Agri. Thank you for, for hosting this. Um, a lot of what I've heard, it's, it's quite thrilling to hear coming from, from others as the years progress and we can see the uh, revolution of blockchain technology. And it's amazing to hear that, that others are starting to see the benefits uh, that decentralized uh, map-based currencies and map-based uh, 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 tokens can bring to the region. Uh, so today we're going to just present briefly on, on, on what BIT does, how we embrace uh, digital assets, blockchain technology, and how we look at our core mission of building out a Caribbean settlement network within the within the Caribbean basin. Um, so without further ado, I'm actually going to ask Roland to just uh, give a brief breakdown on exactly what we do and what we're solving here. So uh, following on from the, the previous discussions, there are a number of challenges that we face uh, in the Caribbean and obviously in Guyana, your experience in these. When you go to do uh, uh, cross-border transactions, we all face lengthy settlement times, a lack of financial inclusion, and a large number of underbanked citizens in the region. There's also a lack of banking infrastructure. Things like throughout the Caribbean, there's fragmented currencies, restricted barriers to e-commerce and innovation in payments, and as we mentioned, high remittance costs. So how can we uh, solve these issues that we're facing in the Caribbean. The solution is to actually have the technology infrastructure in place for a Caribbean settlement network. And this is something that can be achieved with blockchain and distributed ledger technology. And BIT, right here in the Caribbean, has this technology that we're willing to empower people with and share throughout the Caribbean. So Gabriel uh, mentioned blockchain technology and we've been discussing it with cryptocurrencies. We've talked about Bitcoin, but the real interesting thing about Bitcoin is that the underlying technology also enables central banks to issue their own digital currency. And that's something that we haven't seen up until now. No central bank in the world has done this yet. Uh, on the blockchain, but BIT has this technology and we're now in discussions with a number of central banks in the region so that we can uh, assist central banks to issue cryptocurrency. So Greg, over the last over the last three years, our endeavors have been to build out a Caribbean digital exchange. What this means is we would allow digital assets to be paired to national fiat currencies. To further go into layman terms, what we're basically doing any digital asset to their national dollar. So in Barbados's case, when Bitcoin comes in, it can be converted straight to Barbados dollars in a matter of microseconds. Furthering that, we took the mission forward by looking towards central banking and the issuance of digital cash on the blockchain. In 2016, in February, Bit.com introduced the first ever digital cash system on a blockchain with the nod of approval of a central bank and the backing of a government. In this particular case, the Ministry of Finance of the Barbadian government. In February, what we ended up launching was a mobile wallet that spoke towards the Barbadian digital dollar, giving Barbadians the functionality to send and receive dollars in Barbados in a digital format using a peer-to-peer -peer model. Now, every transaction that was deployed ended up being logged on-chain to an immutable ledger that we know as a blockchain. So I'm going to pass it back on to Roland to take things back and try. Absolutely. Because if we look at using cash transactions, there are a number of uh, issues associated with cash. You've got the recurrent cost of printing and coining physical currency. We know that for Guyana, this has to be done in London, in the UK, and then you have to use foreign exchange to actually purchase physical currency to do transactions. This becomes a burden to taxpayers. And with that physical cash, you now have security risks. You've got risks of theft in transportation and storage. You're also limited to doing transactions in person. There's a time consumption to count physical cash. There's a circulation of counterfeit cash. There's also uh, 
problems like damaged currency, all of these things end up uh, bringing friction to the payment system. So this causes small businesses and micro businesses to suffer. And if you're looking to do uh, electronic payments, perhaps you may decide, okay, well, we can use um, uh, cars, we can use Visa or Master. Now you're going to be subject to the very high restricted costs that these um, payment channels have. So look into the future. What would be a more sensible solution? We have the technology here and we can now use this technology uh, with cryptocurrencies for much faster, reduced costs, seamless, uh, transparent transactions that will bring efficiency and also increase uh, our productivity and business within the Caribbean. So in essence, what we have done uh, is we have basically looked at the three layers of the money supply chain and those three layers of the money supply chain would be cash issuance at the central banking level, cash distribution at the commercial banking level, and cash accessibility at the consumer level. What we did as an organization is observe these three layers of the money supply chain and the efficient inefficiencies that they brought within the Caribbean region. We're all going to outline some of the systematic financial problems that we've identified uh, as a people within our region, high settlement times, high remittance costs, etc. Looking at the three layers of the money supply chain, we emulated it at a digital level. So in essence, what we produced was software that allowed central banks at layer one to issue digital cash. It allowed commercial banks at layer two to access, interface, and work with this digital cash and become a digital cash account provider. And at the final layer, we allow consumers to access this digital cash through mobile, software, website interfaces, ATMs, merchant processing, and other types of payment systems that allow a user to become a direct interface and become a digital cash account. So in essence, looking at these three layers of the money supply chain, when digitized, allows an entire ecosystem to move into a smarter economy. So in essence, that's what we have done here in Barbados. The idea is to take this model throughout the rest of the Caribbean and empower countries within the CARICOM region specifically, like Guyana, to truly take towards the fruition that we have under one of the most beautiful trade agreements, the revised Treaty of Chagrounds. We happen to all be part of CARICOM, and one of the greatest mandates under this treaty was a multilateral clearing facility. And to this date, the success of this multilateral clearing facility has yet to be seen. Blockchain technology enables the possibilities of building out such a system. And that is our benchmark here of it. And that is what we're trying to build with the Caribbean Settlement Network. So one of the, the key things that's affecting the region at the moment is corresponding uh, banking and de-risking. And this poses a major problem when we're trying to receive currency and send currency from uh, the region. So how do we address that? Well, currently, we have a lot of migrant workers, people that leave under different programs like the Seasonal Agricultural Work Program, program in Canada. And these people earn um, Canadian dollars, but then they uh, have a, a minimum of 25% that they must remit back to uh, their domestic, their local country. Now, that money is then taken through the banking system. It will go through a number of different parts through the correspondent banks. And eventually, by the time it comes, there's large fees that are taken out. It may take several days to, to come out of the accounts. And this is highly inefficient, and it's very costly to local people. So what would be an easier way to transact and to remit money from countries like uh, the UK, Canada, and the US. Well, we can use distributed ledger technology, we can use blockchain technology to do this. We can use the payment rails that Bitcoin has already proven to be very effective. And this is something that we're doing at Bit, and it's something that we can uh, do in, in Guyana as well. So we would like you to reach out to us and, and find out how this can be achieved, because this is the next step. Um, obviously, the, the de-risking aspect of things means that uh, the, our countries will be cut off 
from uh, doing transactions globally. It also means that in order to do transactions with each other, we have to go into US dollars and, and then we have to go back into our local currencies. We're developing a Caribbean settlement network which will eliminate these frictions and, and it will cause a much uh, more efficient system for us to, to conduct business with each other and trade throughout the Caribbean, which will, in, 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 uh, in effect, increase consumption, economic growth, motivate trade, and so forth. So, basically, in essence, what we are trying to build out is not just an ecosystem within uh, each island, but the capacity to maintain Caribbean sustainability and increase it. Um, the introduction to synthetic monetary unions, the idea of being able to explore bilateral currency swaps. For example, I'm aware that Guyana and Trinidad are in discussions of a bilateral currency swap. There is no mechanism to truly and effectively manage a system uh, with transparency, scalability, and efficiency built into it that is offered at this scale. Uh, looking at this kind of effective system, you can then have a multi multilateral currency swapping scenario and a multilateral trading facility. And that can greatly impact sustainability within the region and, 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 and stimulate uh, inter-regional trade. So moving forward, our key missions have been completing the first phase, which is deployment of our ecosystem within Barbados. And once again, this ecosystem is ensuring that central bank, uh, or sorry, the Barbados digital token is utilized at a commercial level, distributed to consumers via payroll systems, accessible to convert a digital currency on your phone. How do I take the Barbados dollar from my phone and convert it into cash? This is at the ATM point, at the teller points, ensuring that ecosystem, uh, the infrastructure is put in place on a physical level, and then ensuring merchants, both on brick and mortar and online, can receive this form of digital payments. The important part is, is that this entire network, this entire network operates, operates within a localized perspective, thus keeping margins at the lowest possible uh, range, and ensuring that the lowest cost solution can be provided to citizens within the region. Right. So what we have developed is a digital mobile wallet software where you can hold your digital currency in your mobile wallet and conduct transactions seamlessly anywhere throughout the Caribbean or throughout the world for a matter of fact. In addition, for merchants, we've provided a merchant solution system um, where they also will have a form of the digital mobile wallet but designed for merchants so they can accept payments for goods and services. And this is something that will reduce costs within the payment system and motivate consumption. It will be easier for small and micro businesses to, to accept digital transactions, which they currently haven't been able to do because of the barriers to entry with uh, the current systems and channels like Visa and MasterCard. So one of our biggest components of our infrastructure was openness, ensuring that what we built was built on open standards to allow others to incorporate it. Uh, these open standards don't just range on the API level that allows anyone to basically offer, we are offering banking as a service in essence to not just programmers, technologists, uh, financial inclusion towards those kind of uh, introductions, but specifically open standards that meet these um, uh, open infrastructures with banks, with central banks in ensuring interoperability of this open standard built on top of Bitcoin. So this open standard I'm speaking of is a protocol which is called the Colored Coin Protocol. So uh, one thing that needs to be touched on about Bitcoin and blockchain technology is that Bitcoin serves two purposes. There's a small b that is the commodity we know of. That small b is Bitcoin the price that holds 1,140 US per one Bitcoin. And that is great for a value transfer system and as a bearer instrument. But let's talk about the capital B, the software protocol, the ability to build network systems on top of this open ledger platform. And that is our main focus here at BIT. And that is the power of this kind of technology, is being able to build an open 
all-inclusive system within a region much she needs it for many multiple reasons. Absolutely. And this is this is the, the reason that we have brought this technology um, to the Caribbean so that we can improve the payment system and create seamless transactions within each island and also inter-island seamless transactions. And this is something that has is now available using blockchain technology. And we also have Jamario here who I'd like to, to give you a little bit about the, um, uh, the understanding of how these, um, these payments actually take place, how the transactions actually take place. Jamario will explain that. Okay, uh, so what would occur is that two users would have their Bitcoin or digital asset on their mobile wallet that would be on their phone. And then I'll be able to send to another person. So they will show me their address. And then, yeah, so they'll show me their address. And this address would contain a QR code in front of the QR code with the amount of money they would like to receive. I will scan that QR code with my mobile wallet, and then you will send the, send the, um, the amount of asset to them. So this transaction would then go into the distributed public ledger, which we know as the blockchain, which is visible by everyone, right? And then after the necessary confirmations have gone through and the transactions have been verified, uh, the other person who received the block, <coughs> excuse me, would receive their assets and be able to spend them. Now the important part about those steps I was defined is transparency is built into the system. So every transaction that takes place is in essence being verified on a public ledger. Keeping in mind that, now there's one thing that we haven't touched on that's one of the most crucial things that we do at BIT, which is like regulatory and legal maneuvers and work. So not only have we been applying for various licenses across the region and internationally, uh, when it comes to money services, foreign exchange uh, controls and whatnot, is we've actually built out an extremely robust anti-money laundering and counter-terrorism financing policy and procedure, methodologies, and have actively built that in to how our system functions. So users, before they can access digital assets and participate in this network, are expected to go through a know your customer process where a real world physical compliance officer manually approves that customer to access this network. Now this kind of access can be gained through an entire mobile and internet based product. The next thing outside of compliance and ensuring that we are being diligent when it comes to suspicious activities, um, uh, transaction monitoring and filing with the various regulators, which is an active process that we do. Uh, security is a major component of that. We look at security as the underlying most important aspect of blockchain and Bitcoin technology. Because unlike emails or other sorts of stores of data, when your Bitcoin or your blockchain asset is compromised and the signatures have been signed to move your assets to another public ledger, thank you for the cameo, Oliver, to another public ledger, I mean to another address on the ledger, it is computationally impossible to regain access to those ledger entries. So our fundamental security, our fundamental underlying aspect of BIT is security. So with that being said, not only do we have an advanced cybersecurity information policy, information storage policies, all of our 95% of our digital assets are kept in an offline cold wallet environment. What this basically means is that a system of secure hardware was established in an air-gapped environment that ensured that the production of digital assets or the creation of asset pairs was in a private, secure, and guaranteed mathematical environment to allow us to create such a secure offline um, uh, vehicle for storage of tokens. What this basically means on a layman terms is when a user stores their assets with us, these assets are guaranteed to be in an environment that cannot be tampered with by nefarious actors, third parties, or hackers. Well, do you want to add to that? Absolutely. So the security of distributed ledger technology it achieves it achieves this through the immutable properties 
through asymmetric cryptography techniques. And digital currency is, it essentially has a public key encryption, which can be likened to an address or an identity, which enables users to communicate and transact with other users. So the private key is a secure password that only the user would know, and the holder of this would then generate their own private key and send a message which would be authenticated when the public key is used to verify that the holder of the paired private key is making a payment with that digital asset. This is essentially the form of encryption that is used with blockchain and Bitcoin. This is the same encryption that would be used with any um, digital asset or currency that would be used, even if it's issued by a central bank. And that's something that that hasn't been done before, previous to Bitcoin, and it's something that the central banks and governments all around the world are very interested in, because it means that you've eliminated uh, the possibility of double spending, you've eliminated the possibility of introducing counterfeit currency into circulation, and it provides a much more robust and secure digital payments network for transactions to take place. So basically, this public-private key encryption mechanism, which is a dirty way of saying uh, a secure way of representing your digital assets, it, it, it allows for the inability to forge an asset that exists. So when a central bank in a secure environment utilizing open standards that were built on top of blockchain technology, they are within a full-on control of the issuance process of their now new digital fiat currency. And with this, commercial banks and financial institutions can integrate into this uh, fiat, digital fiat dollar, and then furthermore, distribute it to consumers through mobile wallets, merchant processing systems, payroll, bill payment, and others, other user auxiliary services.